Static electricity is always present in your process. The potential of static electricity buildup to spark explosions, fires, property damage and injury to operators is a constant danger. The consequences of this invisible hazard have been seen many times. While static electricity in daily life appears to be relatively harmless, it can become a serious hazard in the process industry. The first of this two-part series of films, produced by the SIA and ESIG, will detail the certain conditions that need to be met before an electrostatic discharge can cause ignition. The mixture of the solvent vapour and air must be within its explosive range. There must be means of generating the electrostatic charge and the charge must accumulate to a level with enough voltage to initiate a spark. Normally, the spark jumps across a spark gap, but other discharges can occur, such as brush discharges from a charged surface. The risk due to this hazard can be minimized by controlling the accumulation of electrostatic charges to safe values. The rate of generation and providing a means of dissipation or by eliminating the presence of a flammable vapour-air mixture. This section of the film will deal with the sources of static electricity and how they are generated and discharged. Part 2 highlights good operating practice to minimize charge buildup, including the installation of earthing and bonding, use and testing, technical support, codes of practice and legislation. This overview aims to increase awareness of the hazards among solvent users. Static electricity can be generated by liquid movement, such as flow, mixing, pouring, pumping, filtering or agitation, where the movement separates electrical charges which may accumulate in the liquid and containment systems, such as pipes, tanks, drums and road tankers. If either of the materials is an insulator or the plant is isolated from earth, electrostatic charge will accumulate. A good example is liquid flowing through a metal pipe. Electrons move across the boundary between the two bodies and are then unable to return. The charge on the containment system can be dissipated quickly by ensuring that suitable earthing is in place prior to liquid transfer. If earthing is not in place, the charge in the liquid remains and is slowly dissipated, depending on the conductivity of the liquid. How quickly the static electricity charge builds up depends on a number of factors. The turbulence, the speed and contact of the liquid at the surface area of its surroundings and the presence of impurities. The amount of charge remaining after a given time depends on the amount generated and the amount dissipated. The time required to ensure the charge dissipates to a safe level is known as the charge relaxation time, which varies with different solvents. Turbulence from high flow rates, splash filling or free falling liquids greatly increases the charge accumulation beyond the level generated in pipes. Filters can generate as much as 5,000 times the electrostatic charge generated in a pipe because of their large surface area. Dispersing operations can be particularly hazardous due to the extremely high rate of charge generation when particulates are present. Mixing or agitating non-miscible liquids can also generate high charge rates. Poor conductive liquids can spark in the vapour space to an exposed agitator blade or to a filling pipe. The electrostatic charge built up in the liquid will dissipate by migrating from the liquid to an earthing point, with the rate of dissipation depending on the liquid's conductivity. The slower the rate of charge generation, the more chance it has to dissipate and avoid reaching a level of sufficient to cause an electrostatic discharge. While static electricity generation cannot be eliminated, its rate of accumulation should be minimized. Although this is not always possible for some end users, such as spray applications. In pipes, there are recommended safe maximum velocities for various pipe diameters. The second part of this film will focus on the practical measures that can be taken to prevent the build up and discharge of static electricity to reduce the number of serious incidents. We thank you for joining us with this presentation. For further information, please visit our comprehensive websites.